Hello folks. I'm out here in the garage again doing some more with the Vulcan MIG Max 140 welder. I previously reviewed the welder and one reason I wanted to try it out and review it in the first place was because I thought that as an inverter design it might bring some extra efficiency and output to the 120 volt MIG welder market. And in the review I did some cut and etch testing and that showed that it didn't really break any new ground and output and I think I even commented in the review that the wire feed speed seemed limiting. I've done some more with the welder since then and I'm starting to feel that this welder's actually been underpowered from what I would expect. Uh, with 025 inch wire in particular, uh, the low wire feed speed really holds it back and even maxed out, 025 wire is not nearly hot enough for even 8th inch material. Uh, I've seen people mention that it's best to use 025 wire to get the most out of a 120 volt welder, uh, but that's definitely not the case with this welder. Uh, it simply doesn't have the wire feed speed for it. So with that in mind, I decided to do some testing and see what it was actually getting from the welder in terms of actual numbers. Uh, I'll measure the maximum inches per minute of wire feed speed that I can get out of the welder. And I have meters set up so that I can see what the output voltage and amperage is when I'm running maxed out. Uh, something else that prompted me to do these tests is that I don't remember the MIGMAX 215 welder feeling underpowered on 120 volts. Uh, I did a review on that machine as well. Uh, it's a dual voltage machine and during the testing um, I did run it on 120 volt. When running off of 120 volts it won't let you turn the settings up beyond a certain point uh, but it did seem to run just as hot at those settings whether it was plugged into 120 volt or 240 volt. Uh, so that also got me wondering that if basically a dual voltage inverter plugged into 120 volt would do better than the MIGMAX 140. Um, unfortunately I don't have the MIGMAX 215 in the garage right now and I didn't do any cut and etch testing of the 120 volt welds from that welder uh, so I can't do a direct comparison but I do have another dual voltage welder and after I get done getting some numbers from the MIGMAX 140 I'll do some testing on the other dual voltage machine and see how it compares to the MIGMAX 140 uh, when it's run running on 120 volts. So I'm going to get started we'll get some numbers and we'll see what we're getting out of this welder. So those numbers were with CO2 and the included O30 flux core wire and you could see I wasn't getting anywhere near the rated 140 amp output. Uh, I was getting somewhere between 97 to 114 averaging probably somewhere in the range of 105 to 110 amps at about 20 volts. Uh, if I turned the voltage up anymore it, it kind of wanted to sputter and didn't run as smooth. Um, when I turned the voltage up higher I didn't actually get any more amperage output than that. Um, I got more voltage but no, no more real amperage because it was just sputtering too much. And in fact, um, it, it kind of seemed like at a certain point as I turned the amperage up, or sorry, as I turned the voltage up, the amperage actually started to go down a little bit. So those are the results I got out of O30 wire. And I'll tell you right now, I measured the wire feed speed and that is the reason why I cannot get full output out of this machine with O30 wire and why I get just very poor output with O23 wire. The wire feed speed on this machine maxed out at 270 inches a minute. Uh, that's approximate, um, but I, I tested it three different times and I came up with 270 inches a minute each time, so I'm pretty confident that that's what I'm getting out of it. Now, 270 inches a minute is just not enough to get any more than 100 or a little over 100 amps out of O30 wire. Uh, not at the voltage this machine can push. So that's the reason. It's just not going to do it. I don't know that the machine itself is underpowered, I just think the wire feed speed is too low. I would be inclined to think that there may be an issue with my welder and it's not getting the proper amount of wire feed speed. The reason why I kind of think that it is doing what probably they all do is if you look here at the chart and you look at that top, uh, that top range for 025 wire, uh, right there, it's actually um, 025 or 023, I sometimes say 023, just different different brands label it different ways. But if you look at 025 and you look at the recommended thickness scale, it actually stops at 14 gauge. Um, it's not recommending you weld any higher than 14 gauge with 025 wire. And uh, if you look at the settings there, it's saying J4. So it's saying you're not going to, you're going to max out the wire feed speed and you're not going to go any higher than a four on the voltage setting. Uh, so that tells me that 
if this machine could really get the 500 inches a minute that the spec shows on their website, then you would be able to take it at least to eighth of an inch. Uh, with that much wire feed speed, you'd get, be able to get enough amperage out of the 025 wire. Uh, but seeing as they stopped the range for the 025 wire at 14 gauge, I'm thinking that that 270 inches a minute is probably what they're all going to do. So with that in mind, I'm going to run some 035 wire and see if I can get more amperage out of it, see if I can get closer to rated output. Uh, in the previous testing that I did where I compared solid wire with C25, CO2, and flux core, I used 030 wire for all those tests just to kind of give an even comparison. And the reason I chose 030 wire is because that's what was included with the welder. And with a welder that had, you know, four or 500 inch a minute wire feed speed, you should easily be able to get the full output out of this machine out of 030 wire. I wasn't intending to limit it, but that I think just the fact that I was running 030 wire, that's why this machine felt underpowered to me, just because the wire feed speed is kind of low. Uh, so I'll run some 035 wire and see how much difference it makes. Wow, big difference. So there you go. If you want to get the most you can out of this welder, 035 wire is the way to go. Um, as you saw there, uh, with the first set of settings, I was running right at the 140 amp rating, actually a little bit over 140 amps. Um, I did try turning the settings up a little bit higher just to see, and I actually was able to get 175 amps out of it, but the voltage started to crash and uh, the output got really, really wild on it. Uh, but I was able to get pretty consistent output out of it, set to about 140 amps. But it did run a little bit smoother when I turned the wire feed speed down just a touch. Uh, and at that point, I was getting still about 130 amps. And that was on a 316 inch joint running CO2 gas. Um, I'm going to actually cut and etch that joint and show you what kind of penetration we're getting. Um, I have a feeling just based on the way it was running and the way I could see it burning in, that it did a lot better than, than the tests that I did with 030 wire. And just to show how much difference it makes being able to get all of what the welder can put out, uh, this is actually a 316 T T-joint. In my previous testing with this welder, with 316 T T-joint, I had just almost complete lack of fusion with just barely the tiniest little dabs of penetration and no penetration down into the root. By contrast, this joint here, uh, you can see no real lack of fusion. Uh, we have decent penetration on this lower joint uh, all the way down into the root. You can see even right at the toe it was burning in a little bit. And we have decent penetration on that vertical section. So, so there you go. 3 16 material, 035 wire, CO2 gas, and actually fairly decent penetration on this. So there you have it. Not an underpowered welder at all. Um, as far as a 120 volt welder, a uh, decent amount of power, plenty of power for 8th inch. And even based on that cut and etch, it did pretty good on 3 16 uh, I don't know if I would count on it on 3 16 all the time. Um, you know, just being a test joint on the bench here, it's easier to maybe get, you know, perfect results than it is, you know, on an actual project. But, but I mean, I didn't see any issues with that joint. So um, definitely a lot more power than I got out of it during the first testing. And the big limitation is just the wire feed speed. So if the welder had a higher wire feed speed output, uh, you might be able to get a little bit more versatility out of the 030 wire, but as it stands, get yourself a roll of 035, and you're going to get a pretty darn good output out of it. Uh, now, I did do some welding with C25 and 035 wire in the review, uh, but just for the sake of thoroughness, I went ahead and rehooked up the C25 gas, and I'm going to go ahead and see what kind of amperage we can get out of it with the 035 wire and C25 gas. All right, so there you have it. Even with C25 gas, no problem getting the full 140 amp output out of this machine if you use 035 wire. Now, I've done multiple cut and etch tests with the C25 gas and 035 wire on 316 material, 
And I still say that it's probably not quite up to the task of 316's material with C25 gas, even with the 035 wire. Uh, with just the right technique and just the right joint configuration and all that, you can, you can get some penetration, uh, but it's not consistent enough for me to feel comfortable to recommend this for 316's material with C25 gas. Uh, but I think with CO2 gas, uh, you're getting a lot closer to that territory. I still probably would not recommend anything critical be done on 316 material with solid wire with this machine. Uh, however, 8th inch material, plenty of heat, plenty of burn in with the 035 wire. So is the machine underpowered? Not at all. Do I wish it had a lot faster wire feed speed? Yes, I do. Um, I think that if it had a higher wire feed speed, you'd be able to get the rated output out of 030 wire and you'd be able to definitely get at the very least more output out of 023 wire, uh, which would make those wires a little bit more versatile. Uh, but as it stands, um, if you do want to get the full 140 amp rated output out of this machine, it's more than capable of it. Now, as I said, I do have another dual voltage machine I'm going to be taking a look at. Um, I was going to do a comparison in this video, uh, but after seeing those results, um, it's pretty clear what's going on with this machine. Plenty capable of the output, just a little bit low in the wire feed speed. Um, so I'll do a full review of the other machine and um, I'll show all the results that I get in that review and if you want to compare it you can do it that way uh, but I'm not going to make this video any longer than it really needs to be. So the basics, not an underpowered welder but it is a bit limited on wire feed speed so if you want to get that power out of it you're going to need to run 035 wire. Hope you learned something, I know I did. Uh, if you have any questions post them up down below. As always, thank you for watching. Take care. And you know what, just as a little bit of a PS, because I'm sure people are wondering, uh, that last weld that I did where I was getting 140 amps out of it on C25 gas, uh, I did just went ahead and cut and etched it just so you could see what, what kind of penetration I actually got. Now this is 316's T-joint. Um, you can see from the little bit of a crown there, I probably was moving a little too fast. Um, I had stuff in my way, it was hard to be comfortable, so um, I'm sure I was moving a little bit too fast. Uh, but still, you can see on this vertical section, uh, very little, if any, tie-in. Uh, maybe just a tiny bit down here, tiny bit of tie-in there, not a ton. Uh, down this bottom section, we did get a little bit of penetration here, uh, but quite a bit of lack of fusion right here. So some definite lack of fusion on the vertical section and a very clear lack of fusion here. So with C25 gas, definitely not getting as much heat, as much penetration as we did out of the CO2 gas. So there you have it, just so you know. And this like I said, I do think I was moving a little too fast here, uh, but this is very similar to a couple other cut and edge tests I did with 035 wire during the initial review of this machine. So 035 wire, C25 gas, not really up to 316 material in my opinion.